on the GNOME desktop, press the Start button, and type in Terminal. We've now started a command line session in Bash. Let's see where we are in the system. The command is PWD for Print Working Directory or Present Working Directory. We're off the root directory, in the home directory, in our personal directory called 52201. So the tilde represents our personal directory. Let's see what else is in this directory, ls. These are the directories that come with the GNOME 3 interface. Let's make our own directory. Command is mkdir, and we'll name it junk. Hit the enter key. Let's run a directory listing, ls. We can see that the junk directory now exists. Let's run a longer, more detailed listing to find out about this ls space dash l leads us to see junk. It's a directory. I, the user, have read, write, and execute permissions. Members of my group have read, write, and execute permissions. Others have read and execute permissions. Now that we've made a directory, let's make a file. The command is touch, and I'll call it test.txt. Touch space test.txt. Hit the enter key, and let's run an ls. There it is. Let's run a longer, more detailed directory listing with ls space dash l. We can see test.txt has zero bytes. It starts with a dash, so it's not a directory. I, the user, have read and write permission. Members of my group have read and write permissions. And others only have the read permission. Let's edit that file. We'll do it the hard way first with vi. The command is vi space the name of the file. So in this case, it'll be vi space test txt. We've opened the command line text editor. We have to press I to get into insert mode. Now we can type our name. When we finish typing our name, hit the escape key to exit from insert mode. Hold down the shift key and type in zz to save and exit. Let's run a quick ls. There's the file. Let's run a longer, more detailed listing, ls space dash l. We can now see that the file has six bytes, five for my name plus a space that follows. Let's try that with a better editor. Since we're at the command line using a graphical user interface, let's use gedit. gedit space test dot txt. This starts a graphical user interface. Let's add something to that file. We now go to the file menu and choose save. Then we go to the file menu and choose quit. Let's run a longer, more detailed listing, ls space dash l. I notice first off, a backup file was created. Six bytes is the way it used to be. The tilde represents it's a backup file. The newer file has 8 bits because I added the C in another space. Let's get rid of that backup file. rm space test.txt tilde. Enter. Run a quick ls. File seems to be gone. Cat space test.txt will read the contents of that file. I can now see Craig space C in the additional space. Let's copy this file. We're going to copy it into our junk directory. CP space source test.txt destination junk slash test.txt. Where is it going? What will it be called? Now, to see the contents of our current directory and all the subdirectories, we will use ls space dash capital R, the recursive listing. 
enter, we can see the contents of the jump directory. So test.txt was in fact copied into that directory. Let's clear the screen and change directories into the jump directory. CD space jump. I see that I'm in the jump directory. If I do PWD, I can see the root, the home, my personal folder, and junk. Let's get rid of that file that we just created. LS shows that there are no files in there. Let's change directory. CD space dot dot will take me back one step, back to my home directory. I could also have used CD space dollar sign capital H capital O capital M capital E to change to my home directory regardless of where I was. Since junk is now an empty directory, let's remove the directory called junk. R-M-D-I-R -R, space junk. Let's run a longer, more detailed listing. Junk is no longer present. Let's rename test.txt. We move test.txt into a new file name, such as Fred. TXT. Quick directory listing, I see the file was renamed. Let's delete all the files that might be left over in this directory. So we can remove space star dot star, remove any file with any extension. The file is now gone. It's for the cal command. Cal by itself shows the current day and month. But we can also request a specific month or year or both. So I could say Cal for December of 2015. Or I could just say, give me the calendar for the year 2015. There's an interesting oddity I'd like to show you. The calendar for September of 1752. Notice we went from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. We were falling behind because the year wasn't exactly 365 days. So we sprang forward about 12 days to reset the calendar so spring would fall when spring was supposed to fall. Let's explore the manual a little bit. What is ls tells us that ls lists the directory contents. If we need the full command structure, we open the manual ls. Hit the enter key. And we can scroll through many of the options in the manual for the ls command, including ls space dash l, which uses a long listing format. We could also find out about ls space dash capital R, which is the recursive directory listing. You press Q to quit from the manual. When you're finished with the command prompt, type in exit. <laughs> 